All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome, all of our MetaMask community members. We're so excited to have another community call for you guys. Uh, we really, this has been a, a really great way for us to interact with you guys, give you sneak peeks, um, get questions from you, um, and bring you some really good um, info on what we're working on, latest features, what's on the radar, all that stuff. Um, now, I just want to, my name is Shay, um, and uh, I am happy to MC this call today with um, our awesome speakers. We have Alex and Jordan um, on the call today, um, driving the uh, content, and we'll have our guest speakers around hardware wallets coming up shortly, and they'll all introduce themselves. Very exciting. Um, just a quick housekeeping around Crowdcast, which we're using today for our call. Um, remember, this is a, a community call. We want to maintain the town hall spirit of this. We want you guys to have a chance to ask questions and that the speakers can get to that for you guys. So please, please put any questions in the ask a question queue at the bottom there. Anybody, if you see a question that you're also thinking, just upvote it. That way we know this is a question we want to prioritize so that we can get that uh, answer to you guys. Now, if at the end of the call, um, by the end of the call, we don't get to all your questions, which is very possible. Please join our Discord community. We have a MetaMask section and a channel dedicated to our community calls. If there's anything, conversation you want to continue there or any questions we didn't get answered, please put them there. And so we'll make sure that we, uh, we try to address those for you guys as well. And maybe we realize next time we need to add some info in around those uh, questions. Um, as well, you know, there's a chat here. Now we have a, a really big crowd, which is, a, is, is awesome. But again, we want to try and um, be courteous and respectful of everybody on the call. So please, um, on the chat, please only kind of, uh, you know, men, you know, yeah, keep it within the topic of what we're talking about today. Um, keep the questions within the topics we're talking about today. Like I said, if it's, it's unrelated, um, that's okay if you have a question of something else, but please put that in Discord. But today we're going to focus on our agenda, which is Basically, we're recapping um, our events. Um, we're going to be talking about security. We're going to be talking about the hardware wallets. So um, that's going to be the topic of today. Uh, and again, if there's some there's polls there, please uh, fill uh, fill those out if you have a chance. Um, and that gives us an idea of where you guys are at, what things that you're interested in. Now, I know everybody, last time we did have POAPs, I just want to address it this time. We decided to put a pause on our POAP incentive at the moment because we want to make sure we put in a really, really robust reward system for you guys before we roll that out fully. So I know you had a lot of questions about it, but don't worry, that's going to come back, but it's going to be uh, when we, we have it a little bit more uh, connected so that you guys will be able to, you know, unlock rewards, um, really understand how to... Uh, to get those and then also what that means when you have one. So I just wanted to address that up front. Um, also going forward, we are going to start uh, limiting the seats of the live session because we do want to keep that town hall vibe. So if you don't get a live session seat, which you are on today, but if you don't happen to get a seat when you register, you can still watch the live stream on our YouTube channel, which it's happening right now. And of course, the replay of this call, including the interactive chat and the questions and all that good stuff is available uh, right after the broadcast on the exact same link. So that's the nice feature of Crowdcast. So uh, with that said, I will hand the microphone over to Jordan. Thanks so much for the introduction, Shay. Um, would you mind uh, going through a couple of the, the early slides? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just a little, yeah. little introduction. Forgot, forgot to do the introductions. Yeah. So should I go back to... Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. So your slide there. Yeah, go go back to the introduction just for just for the three of us, just so we can, um, you know, really uh, introduce ourselves to this gigantic audience. Uh, I see people all the way in the back <laughs> of the stadium here. There's Ten thousand people. Holy smokes! The stadium. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 thank you so much, Shay, for the for the introduction. Hey guys, can we get some hearts in chat for Shay? Some, some hearts. Oh, thanks, Jordan. <laughs> we got 10,000 people here. We can do some good with this audience. Some, um, yeah, that's how we should use the chat. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so we know Shay, obviously. Uh, I'm Jordan Spence. I'm helping with uh, marketing community and community on the MetaMask team. Uh, I come from my crypto previously and joined the team a couple of months ago. And then obviously we have Alex Jupiter here as well, who's a senior product manager for MetaMask. 
does a lot of uh, great work with the hardware wallet folks. Um, I'll let Alex introduce the hardware wallet panel when we get to them. Um, so go ahead, go ahead and skip a couple slides forward to the event recap, Shay. Awesome. So I don't know if anybody else is in the same boat as me, but uh, I was really, really excited to get back to events this year. Um, obviously, you know, COVID still exists, but I think a lot of people are like going out into the wilderness again, going to events. And so we had a gigantic presence at ETH Denver, and it was very, very exciting and very, very fun. Uh, shaded a lot of amazing work helping set up this event for MetaMask. And it was great to see everybody's faces for the first time in like two years almost. Um, so we had a lot of fun there. We had a couple of awesome speakers talking about MetaMask snaps and talking about uh, the My Crypto MetaMask merger. And uh, this was the fourth ETH Denver that I've personally been to. And it was the largest ETH Denver uh, of all time. There was lines around the door or oh, lines around the block, which honestly, I have mixed opinions about lines. Yeah. But <laughs> they weren't but ready for it, it even. The organizers were 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 blown away at the attendance on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was that was a great uh, event to get us all back into the mix of things in person. Um, additionally, I just came back from uh, from Brazil attending Ethereum Rio, which was uh, a wonderful event. It was uh, much smaller than ETH Denver but it was uh, smaller in a good way. It was much more tight knit. The conversations were, were, were really on point. There, were so, there was so much learning going on and so many people who were eager to get themselves into cryptocurrency and Ethereum and a lot of people learning for the first time, especially a lot of Web2 developers who wanted to learn about Web3. So we were kind of like raising the new generation of, of Web3 developers at this event. Um, and aside from that, I mean, I got to say like Brazil is just beautiful a gorgeous country um so shay or alex have you been to have you been to brazil before i have not but i've been wanting to go i have some friends that live there and yeah. i i'm yeah definitely want to go i definitely <laughs> recommend it alex yeah no same here i want to make my way down there as soon as possible uh, especially well so one of the takeaways from from rio was i think that we need to spend more time in in south america uh so hopefully we can make that happen and get everybody down there at some point but um as we speak there are two more events going on that we're involved in there's there's nft la which is here in los angeles and it's a little more nft centric if you can't guess by the name of it um we have a booth there so if you are in la i'd recommend uh getting yourself over there and like saying hi to our team and interacting and hanging out with us we may have some swag left over there, but it all might be gone as well. I'm not sure. Um, but additionally, uh, extremely far away from LA, we have ETH Dubai happening as well, which we have a more of our team there, another booth there. And there's a lot of uh, amazing conversations happening there as well. I've heard nothing but good feedback about ETH Dubai. Um, and then additionally, uh, after all this stuff, there's more happening like 2022 is the year of events apparently um because we will very likely be at dev connect in april which begins well april begins tomorrow but we'll be there in a couple of weeks uh doing some stuff in amsterdam uh, for dev connect so we would love to see you there and then uh in may we also have locked in a participation at permissionless in florida so a lot of things going on right now we're all very excited we're uh, excited to not only meet you in person, but to get our team gathered up at these events and and meeting, like seeing each other face to face for the first time in some cases. Um, so we'd love to see you there. Um, but that's about it for the for the event recap. And uh, like later at the end of the call, if, if there's any questions about events, then I'd be happy to answer them. Um, but for now, Shay, I'd say go ahead and go to the next slide. All righty. So. Uh, this is a little bit of a uh, shifting in gears from events, um, but one thing we want to really highlight is uh, security stuff in this space. And as you may or may not know, uh, MetaMask is like pretty much security first, and we want to do the best we can to make sure that you understand what you're doing in this space, to make sure you're safe, to make sure your wallet's secure, and to make sure there's no issues whatsoever. And so 
I want to share a couple of security tips with you. And this slide in particular is discussing what it means to disconnect MetaMask from a dApp versus actually revoking a smart contract connection. So in the little corner of this slide, there's a QR code that I highly recommend scanning, uh, or you can just go to twitter.com slash MetaMask. And we had a, a really fantastic thread that dives into what it means to connect your wallet to adapt and disconnect your wallet from adapt versus approving a smart contract versus revoking a smart contract. And so, you know, I, I will I will talk about this for just a couple of minutes here uh, because there's some misinformation about what it actually means to disconnect MetaMask from adapt. And so, what you need to know is that disconnecting MetaMask from a dApp is it's never a bad idea if you're not using that dApp. However, disconnecting MetaMask basically only makes it so that dApp cannot see your address. It does it actually does nothing with your funds or anything like that. And for all intents and purposes, disconnecting MetaMask from a dApp does not make it so the dApp can't do anything with your wallet anymore. So if you've ever approved a smart contract on a dApp, you need to explicitly revoke permission from that smart contract so it can no longer access your wallet in whatever way, shape, or form you approved previously. So I'd really highly, excuse me, highly recommend scanning this QR code or going to our Twitter, reading through this thread because it's really quite important because these are some terms that only really exist in crypto in their specific contexts. And so it's really, really good to learn it and to, and to not have any misinformation out there about that. Uh, but I also wanted to highlight a couple of other uh, security related tips. And you should just, in general, be on the lookout for these kinds of scams. Um, but if you're on Twitter in any capacity and you say the word MetaMask or you tag MetaMask in anything, uh, you'll oftentimes uh, get like, five Twitter accounts replying to you like immediately. And they're like, oh, I can help you click on this form link or whatever. Those are all fake. Okay, those are all bots. They're they're all out to get you. They're out to steal your funds. And typically it's a good rule of thumb to never trust anybody that you don't know sending you a link or telling you to do anything. Um, so I do want to remind you that if you do need help with anything related to MetaMask, then check out the MetaMask support Twitter handle or go to support.metamask.io. Those are the like only places where you'll actually get real advice. Don't trust anybody on Twitter giving you any links to anything. Uh, additionally, uh, there are scams on Twitter where people who have verified Twitter accounts will get their account compromised and then their account will be rebranded to look like they're from crypto, like the cryptocurrency industry. And uh, they do a lot of giveaway scams and things like that. So typically a verification check mark is supposed to indicate that a person is real and authentic and not going to scam you. Um, but that is not the case. So do not trust verification check marks either, um, especially if they look like they're coming from somewhere fishy or someone you don't know. And then lastly, we just tweeted about this a couple of days ago. There is a, a newer scam in the wild where there are websites that will pose as quote unquote mining sites and they will ask you to connect your wallet and to become part of a quote unquote node. And what these sites do is, is right now they're targeting mobile users primarily. But what these sites will do will ask you to approve um, a token allowance on that site. And typically they're asking for approval for the USDT token. Uh, and this, this may expand further, we don't know. But if any site asks you to approve a token and you don't trust it explicitly, you haven't verified that it's a legitimate site or DAP, then, then run away. Uh, because what this site does is, or what these sites do, they will get token approvals and then they'll literally just drain all of that token from token from your wallet and they'll make it look like you're earning tokens or rewards or whatever else. And you're not, you're getting your funds stolen. So to avoid getting uh, screwed by these kinds of things, make sure you are checking the sites that you're on, 
make sure you're verifying that they're legitimate DAP with maybe a real community or real people behind it. And, and don't just wildly approve smart contracts because that's, that's asking for trouble. So a couple of, a couple of general security tips here, um, because honestly, like it is the worst thing in the world to see when anybody gets scammed or hacked or anything like that. And, and we're trying to, to help avoid these things. Um, so if you have any questions like individually or anything like that, uh, or want clarification, you're welcome to reach out to me personally. I'm on Twitter at SpenceCoin. Um, so feel free to hit me up with anything. I'll also be answering questions in the chat after this. So feel free to tag me. Um, mm -hmm. And that's about it for, for my segment on security. And um, I hope you've all learned something from this. And uh, I would say, Shay, go ahead and, and, and take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, you have such a nice announcer voice. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very pleasant. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, as you mentioned, if there's any questions, please cue them up. We are going to we are going to get to um, all the questions at the very end uh, um, and then, you know, be able to have all the speakers speak to that. So, yes, I would love to hand the microphone over to Alex. Sure. Hi, there, everyone. So, Shay, let's go over to the next slide then. Um, we're keeping on the topic of security for this call, uh, and we're going to start talking about hardware wallets here. Um, so I'm the one of our product managers here at MetaMask, and I'm looking after our hardware wallet integrations. Um, but first of all, let's sort of dig into what a hardware wallet is. I'm sure there's a couple of people on this call that those two words are the first time they've heard together. Um, so on a very, very high level, a hardware wallet is a way, a very efficient way for you to keep your private keys offline in a physical device. And of course, if someone gets hold of those private keys that you use to sign any transaction on the blockchain, they can steal all of your crypto assets. So they're really important to keep as safe as possible. But there's many different ways you could store those private keys in a hardware wallet. And MetaMask integrates with, with five different brands, and you can see their brand names on the screen here. And you're going to be hearing from each one uh, of those brands today, a representative from each company who's going to talk about their specific integrations. Because whilst I'm product managing our hardware wallet integrations, we get a lot of different questions from our users because they're a very unique mechanism and user interaction that we have in the Web3 and crypto world. You know, I hear questions such as how do you use a hardware wallet? Why should you use them? And then which one should someone go out and buy? In regards to how to use them, uh, hopefully you'll pick up some interesting tips and tricks on this call today. But I'd also encourage scanning that QR code in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, because that will take you to the knowledge base, the hardware wallet hub on the MetaMask website. In terms of why you should use them, I've given a very high level introduction to that in terms of increasing your security. And for those transitioning from a Web2 world to Web3 world, you are in control of your own security. If you own your keys, you own your crypto. And this is what a hardware wallet allows you to do. Uh, to an industry leading standard. In terms of which one you should potentially go out and buy, well, this is one of the reasons why we put this panel together. So you can hear some of those companies that integrate into MetaMask and you can make your own decision. So we're gonna go through our five different panelists we've got. Uh, due to some technical limitations of Crowdcast, we're gonna have to do this in panels of three and two. But just to start off with, let's just give a little bit of a demo in terms of each one. So first of all, in no particular order, in alphabetical order, uh, we have AirGap. And AirGap exists as an app uh, on, a, on a phone that you can install uh, on an old phone that you no longer connect to the internet. And then you can sign transactions on the blockchain using a QR code. We then also have uh, the Grid Plus company who have made the Lattice one, which looks a little bit like this. This is usually plugged in on your desk. I'm just holding it up now. And you have a card in the side that you can add some extra security on for the pin. We then also have the Keystone hardware wallet, uh, which looks like this. Um, and again, similar to the AirGap one, you sign transactions using a QR code. And then we then have Ledger. And Ledger make a couple of different uh, hardware wallets. This is their Ledger Nano X which integrates into a MetaMask extension by plugging this into a USB port, but it also has Bluetooth functionality as well. And then last but not least, we then have the Trezor device, 
which looks like this. Again, a couple of different devices on the market, but then also plugs into your computer with the USB port. Very, very brief introduction there, but I'll let each one of our representatives expand in more detail there, because I'm sure I didn't do any of them justice. Alrighty, so to begin with, we have uh, Andy from Airgap. We have Alex from Grid Plus, who make the Lattice device, and also Litsyn from Keystone. And we'll just start this off. Uh, would each of you mind just giving a really brief introduction to yourself, your product, your value proposition, to add on top of what I've already said? And then if there's anyone on the call still on the fence about going out to purchase a hardware wallet, anything that could potentially take them over the edge to make that deep dive. So we'll start with Andy here from Airgap. OK. Uh... Can you hear me? Perfect. Perfect. So first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Andy, and I'm one of the developers of Airgap. We are a team based in Switzerland, and we came up with the idea of Airgap about five years ago. Uh, we saw that classic hardware wallets have some limitations, and we wanted to make security accessible to everyone. Um, because of our background in mobile security, we know that smartphones are extremely secure, and getting your hands on a dedicated one is actually fairly simple. Um, a smartphone offers kind of the perfect conditions uh, to be turned into a hardware wallet. It has a big screen where you can see the transaction details. It has battle-tested security and biometrics chips that allow secure storage of your seats. And it also has a camera, which is crucial because it's the only way of communication with AirGap. Uh, AirGap uses it to, the camera to scan QR codes for secure and transpar transparent uh, data transmission. There is no cables or Bluetooth, making any interactions completely air-gapped. Started, you basically just reset the dedicated device, install, install air-gap vault, activate airplane mode to be offline, and that's it. You have a secure hardware wallet. Our solution is completely open source and free to use, and uh, it has recently also uh, been made compatible with MetaMask. Awesome. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, I'll now pass over to Alex from Good Plus. Hey there. Uh, is my mic OK? I haven't used it in a yeah, while. Loud and clear. Right. Awesome. Uh, hi there. I'm Alex. I'm the CTO of Grid Plus. Um, we make what what we you know see as sort of the Cadillac of hardware wallets. So it's kind of souped up, um, much larger. It's a desktop device. Um, as as Alex mentioned, um, but really the the purpose and the demographic we're trying to hit is people who want to be able to read what they're doing on a secure interface. So we have a five inch touchscreen display um, that gives a lot of room for displaying data. Uh, we also have a lot of readability features such as um, contract ABI decoding, um, and then also markdown for EIP seven twelve messages. So you really just get a rich um, sort of sort of rich text on your screen uh, before you're pushing the approve button, uh, which can be important to people. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of physical security features in the device. So there's a there's an anti tamper mesh. So if you were to try to open the device um, and try to like read out any secure data, it would actually get wiped because there's a circuit um, plugged into a battery running in the device at all times. Um, so ba basically. Everything that you do on this device is secure. Um, you can trust that every screen is secure, and you can trust that the data you're seeing actually represents what you're signing. So that's sort of our MO. Awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. Right. And then Lixin, uh, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. OK, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Li Xing. I'm the CEO of Keystone Hardware Wallet. And uh, thank you so much, Alex, for having me here to introduce uh, Keystone Wallet to the MetaMask community. Uh, so, uh, so this is our device. So this is our hardware wallet. You can see that uh, form factor wise, it's pretty different from other hardware wallets. We have a four inch touch screen. And uh, also from the device, you can see that there's no USB ports because we believe that air gap is a one is one of the most important feature for a hardware wallet. Um, so there's no USB ports, no Bluetooth, no FC, no Wi-Fi on this device. And the only way to communicate 
our device with MetaMask is through this camera. So that just like AirGap, we can scan the QR code to get the unsigned information into the device and also use QR code again to get the signed information into MetaMask for broadcasting. And, and uh, previously we have been working on Bitcoin security for about three and a half years and uh, considered as one of the best hardware wallet in Bitcoin community. And we were proud that uh, in December of last year, um, partner uh, together with MetaMask, we brought the QR code air gap to sign in into the Web3 community. And also we have some other cool features. For example, you can see on the lock screen, we can show the NFT. We can show your NFT on the lock screen. And also we have a fingerprint sensor. So it's super easy to authenticate a transaction with your fingerprint. And uh, just like uh, Grid Plus, we're also working on solving the issue of blind signing for the community, which means that uh, if you are using Keystone or Grid Plus uh, with MetaMask for some DeFi transactions or NFT transactions, we can clearly show you uh, not all the DeFi transactions, but most of the top DeFi transactions, we can show you what's going on, what's the input data, and what's the parameters you are interacting with the uh, DeFi transaction. Um, yeah, and uh, this is our device, uh, hopefully. And we see that user experience is a part of the security because human error is one of the biggest reasons for crypto loss. So uh, we are trying to make a much better uh, hardware wallet with better user experience. So this is what we're working on. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks so much. So my last question uh, for you three, uh, whoever wants to jump in to take it uh, before we get the next two up from Ledger and Trezor. Uh, if there's anyone on the fence today thinking about buying a hardware wallet, they just haven't gone over that edge yet. Um, what would you say to them from a security perspective? Who wants to take it? Um, I'm I'm happy to take it for some. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it depends on what your use case is, right? So for me personally, I would I would say there's there's a limit on the amount of um, of money I'd be comfortable storing on a computer. So just if if you're not using a hardware wallet, just be aware that your um, your level of risk is just much higher than someone who is right because all of your like you know all crypto is just something that you hold and you can spend um, as long as you have the private key. So when you're using something like MetaMask without a hardware wallet, your private keys are living in your browser. Um, and they take a lot of steps to protect those to the degree that they can, but there's always risk vectors. Um, so if you're dealing with large amounts of money, I would say, and you're not using a hardware wallet, I would say, please get on that right away. Um, as you, you know, as you kind of approach that situation and, and, you know, like we're talking about, there's different hardware wallets for different use cases. So grid, grid plus is really geared towards the, the, you know, larger sums of money um use case but you know we work for all use cases as well um but yeah i think this if if that's you then i think this um this panel should be helpful awesome thanks so much alex uh right shay let's get uh kyle and simon on from ledger and trezor respectively awesome sounds good well before we hop if there's any questions you guys have for any of our um hardware wallet guest speaker panelists today Now's the time to pop it in the queue. If not, we'll kind of move on and then we'll see if we have that at the end. Um, but this is a great opportunity to ask everybody. Um, wanted to thank, uh, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to thank Andy, um, Lixon and Alex, and we are going to bring up our, our next wave here. One second. All right, thank you guys. I'm gonna put you back on the seats in, in our front row. <laughs> They'll be back on stage soon, probably. <laughs> They'll be back on stage soon. Yes. Okay. And um, and I don't know if you wanted to give a, a quick introduction, Alex, while I'm bringing them up of our next uh, panelists that you're going to speak with, Kyle and Simon. Okay. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So the names uh, Ledger and Trezor shouldn't be uh, you know new to anyone sort of involved in the crypto industry. Um, they've got some really successful hardware wallets on the market right now. Um, as I said, they both currently integrate with our with our extension. Uh, both similar 
in regards to how they connect in regards to plugging into the USB port, but they do use different protocols in terms of interacting with, with MetaMask there. Um, but I really want to give the floor to the, the panelists themselves to talk more. So perhaps whilst we're waiting for Simon to join, uh, I'll pass over to you, Carl. Same question. Hello, consensus team. I made it. You made it. <laughs> From the front row. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, That's thank right. You. Thank front you row so seats. Much. Um, <laughs> There's Simon. Yeah, All right, I, great. I would, I'd love to take a moment to just reiterate what I think people have been saying. Uh, a lot of people that are probably in the chat right now haven't put much thought into security. Like they, they know that they, they need security. They may not have enough money yet that they've had to think very seriously about it. But the one thing that all of us in the crypto space have in common is that we are all protecting a secret. Like if you have an account on the Ethereum network, you are responsible for protecting something secret and keeping it secret forever. Um, it, a lot of talk about private keys, but people watching this chat may, may not know like, well, I don't know what a private key is. Um, if you were ever given a set of 12 or 24 words, English words to write down and keep safe, that is uh, all of your private keys encapsulated in one message that it's your job to keep safe for the rest of your life. Because the, the second somebody obtains those 24 words, or those 12 words, they become you. Like anytime you wanna spend money on the blockchain, you emit a message saying like, hey, I am moving money. And as a proof that I am the, the rightful owner of this money, here is a signature that I use my private key to give you. And so if that private key or if that seed phrase ever leaks out into the world, it's GG, like all your accounts, all your assets just gone. Um, so like, why are we all on stage here today? It's because we're trying to tell you that like, Sorry to MetaMask, but just in general, a computer is not my ideal place to store a seed phrase. You know, like when you get a certain amount of funds on your account, you start thinking about like, well, how could an attacker come get me? Like, how could they obtain the seed phrase from me? And, you know, computers can run arbitrary code. They're connected to the Internet. Like that's that's why we use them, because they're great. Um, but when it comes to storing a single 24 word string that you need to keep secret, you often want to boost your level of security up a little bit. So all of us with our own products are, are solving this problem in our own ways. All these devices are effectively a way to store 24 words offline in a safe way. And then, you know, we're here to try to like sell you on which one or the other is, is the right one. What I will tell you that in using any of our products is going to be a level up in security than using your computer alone. So wh whatever one you pick, like that's, that's where you should be thinking here. Uh, and then, I have a ledger. I I think that ledger is the correct way to, to do this, but you know we're all here. Um, I, I guess one advantage that I would say ledger has over uh, a lot of the other products here is that if you were to venture outside of MetaMask and say like, hey, I'm interested in getting into the Solana ecosystem, or I, I've heard about Cardano and I wanted to go play around with their, their new upgrade or, or the Cosmos ecosystem or Terra, you know, like there's there's lots of other blockchains that are uh, outside of MetaMask's purview that um, if you're protecting your seed phrase using a, a MetaMask compatible wallet, it might be nice if you had a, a wallet that's also compatible with other uh, browser extensions and other networks. And that's something that Ledger strives really hard to do is be broad support for lots of blockchains and lots of networks. Um, so if that if you're adventurous, if you wanna go out and, and explore the, the broad ecosystem, I would recommend getting a Ledger. But again, any of us here are, are going to be giving you a product that is an, a strict upgrade in security from what you're probably using already. Awesome. Thanks so much, Carl. I think, yeah, it's just worth highlighting that, you know, MetaMask is a very security focused call. And, you know, we are encouraging people to adopt whatever hardware wallet they, you know, they see as the best for them. And yeah, potentially, you know, to follow the advice that Carl was just talking about. In regards to potential multi-chain future, it's something that MetaMask is actively working on to support some of those chains as well. Um, we're all part of the blockchain ecosystem. We've got to try and get as many people involved as possible. Well, if yeah. MetaMask rolls in Solana support, we're ready for you when you're there. <laughs> no word today. <laughs> um, all right, I'll pass over to Simon then. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Simon from Trezor. I'm actually being quite nervous. I never spoke to 10,000 people, so uh, I hope everything comes across nice and clear. But uh, I can echo what Kyle was saying about um, it's nice that we can all come together as an industry and promote the idea of using hardware wallets and get things off your computer because uh, we all make these little special devices where it keeps your keeps your information safe and away from your 
potentially untrustable computer. So, and the other nice benefit of having a hardware wallet is it's peace of mind. Like I put my a hardware wallet in the, in the cupboard and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about scanning it for viruses or anything like this. But we too also support uh, multiple blockchains, multiple currencies. Another feature to add that Trezor supports and maybe the other pro hardware uh, products do this too, is we're also authentication providers. So we can, you can actually log into some websites using your Trezor. Um, and, and that's actually quite handy as well because it uses the same C phrase, which you have written down and kept in a safe place away from your hardware wallet, which everyone should be doing. Um, and just like, if you don't use your hardware wallet, if you don't have a hardware wallet, you should be also keeping your MetaMask phrase away from your computer as well. So that's, um, that's the main benefit of, of jumping onto the hardware wallets. And one thing I also like from the idea of hardware wallets is it's actually quite easier to bring on new people to the, to the blockchain world. Um, you give them something physical and like, okay, okay, so this is where my, my coins are. And it's not exactly where the coins are, it's where the keys are, by giving them something tactile, something to, to touch, um, is it brings it, it brings it way more into the real world. So, um, and we all know this, we're all here to sort of preach to the choir to some degree, but we're hoping the other people part of the metaverse world can understand that, um, unfortunately our computers are just not safe. We can't trust them as much as we want to. And this is where the little hardware wallets are here to help. Yeah, Simon, so, mean, you said something I really liked about the, like using a hardware wallet, a lot of people assume is going to increase the complexity of their system. And what it really does is it gives you, it lightens the load. You don't have to have so much burden on your, uh, like thinking about how secure is your PC. Like you don't all have to become IT experts out there and hardening your systems and it's like malware defense. Because your seed phrase is stored off of the computer, your computer can just, you can use it like a normal person uses a computer and not worry so much. Uh, so like a lot of people assume that going into hardware wallets, like making things way harder. And I would say it should make you more calm and be able to just use your computer like a normal human. Yeah. So maybe this is a bit of a pitch, but at Trezor, we have a, what we call a USP and we focus on usability, security, and privacy. And usability is actually a big part of crypto in general, because we all know when crypto came back, came out with Satoshi, it was hard to use, really hard to use. And, and a part of that hard part is actually keeping it secure. So. Uh, we want to make things as usable as possible and, and spread the word and spread and make people enjoy what they do. And at the same time, keeping their coins safe or well, their, their keys safe. <laughs> we should in return as the coins. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, uh, Carl and Simon. Um, right, Shay, let's, uh, let's move to our third of, uh, four panels. So let's bring back on, uh, Lixin and Andy from Airgap. Um, we'll drop Simon into the wings for now, uh, but he can come back for the finale. All right. Bye, Simon. We'll put you in, in the front row. Multiple combinations <laughs> of panelists. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, That's right. Okay. So we're bringing on um, yeah, Lixin and, sorry, Alec and Andy. Lixin. That's right. A peek behind the curtain curtain here. There's an Andy. maximum of six people. Keystone. So that's why we're shuffling. That's right. Yeah, it's an award show. That's right. Yeah, Crowdcast has a limitation for the stage, so <laughs> it, we're trying to. I like you know, being transparent. Round like, if here. people are wondering why okay. it's a little bit weird, it's because there's a maximum of six, so we're just making making the best. Absolutely. Of it. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, we have a great we have a great crowd. Yeah, you know everybody understands, and we appreciate that about our community. All right, so Andy's coming up too from AirGap, and I think there we go. All right. Then. All right. Great. So I all have an idea of what you three may uh, answer this question, but the floor is yours. Uh, are there any new exciting product developments on your side you'd like to share with the MetaMask community today? Yeah, okay. We'll start off with uh, Lix. Yeah, so from, from our side, uh, I just saw that a lot of people are asking when, the Meta, uh, when there will be hardware wallet support for MetaMask Mobile. Uh, actually, we are working on MetaMask Mobile hardware wallet support. Uh, because we just like uh, AirGap, we leverage QR code to interact with the software wallet. So QR code is very uh, cross-platform compatible, not only with MetaMask extension but also with MetaMask Mobile. Uh, I think we're closely we're closely working with Alex and other developers in MetaMask Mobile team to get Keystone integrated with MetaMask Mobile. I hope that in the next few weeks, maybe in the near future. We will get we'll release that integration very soon. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Listen. Uh 
let's head over yeah. to Andy now. Yeah, um, from our side, it's, uh, well, as Lix just said, um, once MetaMask Mobile supports QR-based uh, wallets, then also AirGap will be um, supporting MetaMask Mobile. So that's definitely one exciting new feature. And uh, in general, we've been, or we are focusing at the moment on uh, security and the kind of usability features that increase security, because we noticed that um, recently, and I mean, you basically started the, the, the whole call with this topic. Um, there are a lot of attacks where um, users are basically tricked into doing something because it's hard to understand what actually happens. Now, one of the advantages of our uh, solution is that we have a, a big users have a big screen. So we actually have the, the option to to display a lot of information so we can kind of give hints about what is going on on a secure device, which will then increase the security for the user because he might be uh, able to understand what is happening and that something is actually dangerous, even though it might seem innocent. So that's uh, one thing that we're, we're currently working on. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. So yeah, exciting news on MetaMask Mobile really soon. Uh, Keystone will be dropping first and then after a period of time, uh, probably air gap, not too long afterwards. Um, so yeah, exciting news there, but I'll pass over to Carl for any updates on his side. from Legend. Sure. Uh, I actually have a new hardware uh, wallet to, to show you guys. This actually just started shipping two days ago. So it's like hot off the presses, brand new. I, this is actually pre-production. Um, we've, we've refreshed the Nano S, so it's like the OG well-loved hardware wallet from back in the day, uh, tried from 2017 or 2016. Um, people love the S, but it's starting to show signs of age, frankly, at this point. Uh, there's the Nano X, which is our like flagship top of the line. It's got Bluetooth, it's got battery, mobile support. Um, but if you don't value the Bluetooth or you don't want to take it on the go and you just loved the idea of the S, the smaller form factor, but you wanted the additional features of the X, like the better screen, uh, the more capacity we have the product for you now so it's like roughly half the price of the x and it's called the s plus um you right now there's still a like uh, waiting list for it but it's starting to ship now so you'll you'll be able to order it very soon very exciting awesome that's really exciting so you three uh sorry to say this is the last time you'll be on the panel so i'll just give you a chance there's any last words for the metamask community otherwise we'll move on to the the last panel gm <laughs> yeah gm and also from keystone side uh we're also adding just like kyle said we're also adding more ecosystems into keystone and we're working with another solana wallet to get integrated so that uh, our users can also use keystone with one of the top solana wallets very soon yeah and i just want to say thanks for having us and uh yeah to everyone who wants to try it out uh our solution give it a try um you i'm sure you all have an old phone lying around so you can just give it a try and let us know how you like it yeah and we're also very open to user feedbacks so you can reach out us on telegram or discord and we can talk about the product and if you need any other features or um or like cool features like an nft display just let us know we're quickly iterating the product Someone in the chat asked me for a Fendi, one of the like Fendi le ledger cases, and uh, I want one. Once I get one, then you can have one. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. Great ideas. Yeah, there is a, before you guys go, there is a quick question um, around, uh, let's see here. All the wallet offerings are great. And um, Keystone, and I think I'm gonna find the question. Ah, was it added? Um, was basically saying, what's the difference between? Um... Good luck following the chat. It's oh, it's a gosh. it's a madhouse. <laughs> yeah, I, I had moved it into I moved it into a, a question. Oh, there we go. Got it. Um, I had moved it in as a question here. So, uh, hey. but maybe I won't find. Oh, Air, Air Gap and Keystone. Yeah. So they were basically saying it seems very similar. What is the key difference between? And I don't know if that's something you guys want to kind of differentiate a little bit so okay. people understand. So actually, so uh, we and AirGap, we're using the same QR code protocol to interact with MetaMask. But the difference is that Keystone is a dedicated hardware wallet. Um, and also, we have some extra uh, security features. For example, uh, we have Shamir backup, 
And uh, here also kudos to Trezor team. Uh, we leveraged Speeps39 uh, for the Shamir backup for your recovery phrase. And also we have some other features like you can, with Keystone, you can roll your dice to generate your recovery phrase, which means you don't need to trust our device to generate the recovery phrase for you. And also we have uh, just, we have also other features like self-destruct mechanism, which means uh, if a hacker stole your device and uh, try to deassemble the device and uh, te to tamper with the device, then the device will detect the deassembly of the hacking action so that the recovery phase will be destroyed in this device. So uh, we are a dedicated device, uh, not like a mobile phone. We added some specific security features for your crypto security. Uh, Lix yeah. or perhaps Andy, would you mind explaining Shamir backup for those who may not be aware of that, that term? Okay. Shamir backup is just like something like multi-sig. So for example, you only have one set of recovery phrase, your 12 or your 24 words. But with Shamir backup, you can create a three slash five recovery phrase, which means you have five sets of recovery phrase. And with at least three of them, you can recover your private key and your account. So that in this way, you can like split your recovery phrase into five pieces and put those five pieces in, uh, in the homes of your five friends. And uh, if one of them or even two of them to try to put together their recovery phrase, they cannot get your account they cannot get your private key. So this is Shamir backup. And uh, Trezor introduced the Shamir backup into the crypto world. And we use the same protocol as Trezor to, uh, to help people to better protect their re recovery phase. Yeah, and uh, maybe from our side, uh, just to go back to the original question. Uh, so our projects are actually quite similar. Um, and I think the, the main difference boils down to the hardware. Like software-wise, we also have uh, Shamir recovery. Um, we have entropy collection with dice and key coin flips. Uh, we also have other features like BIP85 um, that allows you to derive child keys, which is also a very interesting feature because you basically can have one device uh, like very and one secret very secure and then you can derive uh, deterministically new keys and use them in less secure setups to try out a new wallet for example um, but the the main difference basically boils down to hardware um, keystone has a dedicated hardware uh, produced specifically for this purpose and in our case you can actually choose the hardware freely which well both kind of both um, setups have advantages and disadvantages, and it's basically up to the users to decide. Like one advantage, for example, is that you can you are free to choose uh, the the phone that you are using. So uh, supply chain attacks are, for example, a lot less likely because it's not a single device. Nice. Yeah, I think the future of uh, splitting keys up and having multi sig is pretty interesting in the the blockchain ecosystem we'll see where that develops and for people listening that have no security stance at all don't worry about the slip 39 don't worry about shimmer secret get yourself to a hardware backup first and then like you can worry about splitting your secrets and like how many friends you're, sh you're sharing it with like yeah get, good advice. get the basics down <laughs> good advice there you go awesome all right. yeah alex yeah so it, our edge uh, any, I think we can move on to the next wave if you're ready. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Carl, Lixon, and Andy. Let's move uh, back to Alex from Good Plus and Simon from Trezor. All right. And thanks, guys. and by the way, we are going to have. Thank you, Kyle, uh, Lixon, and and in here, I'm going to put you guys in the front row. We are going to have um, links to all of their you know, call to actions and how you can find out more about these hardware wallets um, on the slide deck. And we'll send that to you with the replay as well uh, after the call. So we are bringing back up Alex, you said, Alex? Yep, Alex from Grid Plus and Alex, Simon. Alex. Yep. Gotcha. Alex is a common name, so yeah, might be a bit confusing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bear with me as I'm finding everybody in the crowd. 
Um, and yes, thank you everyone for the questions and upvoting that helps a lot because now we're gonna see which questions we can prioritize at the end here and really be able to kind of ask that on your behalf. Now you do have the option to come up on stage and ask your question if you're interested. Um, if that's the case, just right next to your question, stage. And that'll give me a sense that that you'd like to be invited onto the stage. If not, um, I will ask the question on your behalf, of course. Okay, so Alex, one second. Sorry, we're bringing him up as well. There we go, Simon. How was the refreshments in the green room? Uh, it was great. <laughs> the coffee was great. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, so good to see you again, Simon and Alex. Uh, same questions I asked to the previous three. Um, we'll start with Simon this time. Uh, do you have any exciting product developments you'd like to share with the MetaMask community today? Yes, yeah, so um, it's actually a little bit old now already, but at the beginning of uh, March, it's actually more towards MetaMask, but MetaMask completed the integration with Trezor for EIP 712. So what that really means at the end of the day is that you can get back to collecting your NFTs on places like uh, OpenSea. So there was a period of time where it wasn't really working, unfortunately, but we're back now and it's all good to go. Um, what's quite interesting there, it uses a sort of a um, little connection platform called Trezor Connect. It's really specific, but uh, the MetaMask team and the Trezor team work together to get that all through. And that's really nice. And the other point I wanted to touch on, it's a little bit down the road more, but um, commitment to our open source philosophy here at uh, Trezor is we are developing an open chip. And what that open chip means is that our hardware wallets in the future will be completely auditable. And we are working on a secure element that will be open source and potentially we can offer it to other hardware providers as well. So um, we're big fans of open source. Everything that we do is open source. Even the designs of our trezors are, are open source. You can 3D print them at home if you really wanted to. But um, we're quite excited at the, build, uh, at the chance of actually building our own chipsets as well. So or chips, I shouldn't say chipsets. Um, yeah, that's, that's what's coming from, it's our sister company, but it's still part of the family. Nice. Uh, pretty exciting there, Simon. Wasn't aware that was on the horizon. Yep, awesome. yep. Um, Tropic Square, if you want to look it up. Will do. Nice. Uh, and then over to you, Alex. Yeah, sure. Um, so real quick, before, <laughs> I forgot to mention uh, about our safeguards. So um, one of the kind of contextualizes the conversation, but... Um, one thing that we do with the Lattice is we allow you to have these um, extensible safeguards. Each one of these is a, um, a seed phrase, basically. So you can, when you're setting it up, you can it'll show you the seed phrase you generate. You can write it down, or you can just make copies of these safeguards. Uh, they're about 20 bucks, and I, I have like 10 myself. So um, that's sort of how we approach um, support for like multi-sigs and stuff. Um, in terms of new features, so like I mentioned, we put a lot of stock into readability features. So right now we have the ABI decoding, and then we also have the ability to tag addresses. So anytime, you know, you're interacting with a contract, or even if you're, um, you know, for instance, making a swap on Uniswap, um, and it decodes that that call data, um, if there's an address that you have tagged, so like if you tag the die token address or something, it'll show you that tag rather than just the, the address. So um, we put a lot of focus on readability. So the first thing that we shipped was that ABI decoding feature. But the way that it works right now is you have to you have to load ABI data ahead of time. Um, and you do that using a, a little tool we built called the Lattice Manager. Um, so the the next major um, thing that we're shipping is a just-in-time ABI decoder. So if you are just using MetaMask and you interact with a contract, um, we should be able to scan Etherscan and be able to pull down that data. Um, there's different levels of like verification uh, that I won't get into at the protocol level, but um, you know we show you all of the data that we can we can verify and you'll still be able to to load things in ahead of time if you want this like additional level of security and we'll, we'll write all about this i won't get into the details but um you'll still be able to do that but at a basic level like the the general readability of just your average transactions can get a lot better 
Um, so hopefully we'll have that out in, I don't know, maybe a month or so, uh, still working on it. The other thing is we just shipped um, a, a pretty major feature where we now support um, signing of, of really, I won't say any type of transaction because it depends on the cryptography, but pretty much like any, any blockchain that you're using today, um, Solana, Terra, Cosmos, um, I don't know, Bitcoin, EVM, all, all of the stuff. Uh, we support signing now. So at a hardware level, we support signing. So we're going to be putting more work into approaching these other blockchains for integrations. And I know MetaMask is working on uh, their Snaps feature, which may um, may go nicely with this. But yeah, we our, our general approach is, you know, we want kind of an iPhone experience, right? So like you unbox it, you set it up, um, you easily connect and pretty much everything you do just kind of works right out of the box. And there's ways you can enhance your experience, but um, we want to get to a place where uh, you don't have to install like a bunch of dependencies and it's just a, a device that's, that's helpful um, in terms of displaying data and like easy to use. Um, so yeah, those are the major features. Um, one other quick thing to note is that we do manufacture our devices in in the US, um, if that is a concern for anyone. Got it. Well, uh, yeah, anything else on you, Simon and Alex? Otherwise, thanks so much. And uh, yeah. Maybe not something so new, but I just wanted to sort of like shout out our, our colleagues in the industry, let's say. Um, it's quite humbling to see that uh, Everyone is using C phrases, and a few a few of the other guys here are also using Slip39. So it's the, like the super advanced recovery. Uh, I will echo what Kyle said: is that you know, if you're starting out, do the normal um, seed phrase system, and then if you want to get a little bit more advanced, look into Slip recovery, Slip uh, Shamir recovery, I should say. But um, you know, at the end of the day, this industry is quite young. We're not even 10 years old in terms of hardware wallets. So we are sort of touching on this a lot of the first time. And, you know, people who haven't jumped onto the boat yet can actually be part of the early adopters as well. So um, you, you can, uh, we, we still are having, a, we still ship our initial version of the Trezor and, you know, Kyle just also mentioned they recently revamped their the first version of the, of the ledger. So um we're, we're still we're still it's, it's still interesting time to to jump on board um in a few years uh, it might be so so normal that everything is really easy to use and your grandma will be using it and doesn't even know what she's using but this is this is where we want to go where it's so simple to use but completely secure at the same time so this is what the future holds for us yeah, I just wanted to make one general note here um this is actually one of our most common kind of sources of confusion for new users. Um, if you are not using a hardware wallet right now and you, you have your seed on MetaMask, if you buy a hardware wallet and take that seed and put it on your hardware wallet and it's still on MetaMask, um, you haven't really um, you haven't really benefited yourself much. So like uh, someone said earlier, um, you know you have the seed phrase, the, the 24 words. Um, that that is like secret information forever so like if you know if you have that sitting around and someone learns about it in five years and you still have you know coins associated with those keys um that person can steal them so just be aware of that um we know that it is expensive to move between seed phrases so like if you have a bunch of nfts on your metamask and you spin up a new hardware wallet you, you're probably thinking like oh well i don't want to i don't want to make you know 50 transactions and like you know, that that's just a pain point. So I, I, I get that perspective, but just I want people to be aware that um, buying a hardware wallet and using the same seed um, isn't isn't necessarily a great solution. Um, so if you're if you're if you're making the transition to a hardware wallet, I would recommend setting up a new seed. Um, getting it off your computer is better than not. But I would I would recommend, you know, if you have the ability to um, generate a new seed on the device. Spit, uh, send your assets to those keys. And I think at the end of the day, it's a small price to send your your assets to your new freshly generated on hardware hardware wallet uh, seed phrase. So uh, it's better than be, being compromised one day. So just buy the bullet and, and, and transfer everything over on a brand new seed phrase. 
that that is a great piece of advice to end on here i think yeah 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 great advice you guys awesome well thank you and uh so i guess we will say goodbye to our <laughs> other panelists and great great uh info you guys and we are also gonna again like everybody on the panel today we're gonna have their information call to actions find out more about all these hardware wallets hopefully you guys feel a bit more educated um and i think they gave you some great advice around security and just why using it how using it so definitely do your own research find the the wallet that meets your needs the best all right thank you guys um i'm gonna put you in the front row you can go grab some drinks if you want <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. And brought, and we brought Jordan back up. So uh, I guess I can move this to the next slide. Uh, here we go. Is that correct? Uh, Alex, should we move on yeah. down yeah, to our questions? All right. Great. So yeah, let's get to your questions, everyone. So we do have a few here that, uh, everybody has upvoted. So let's just prioritize those. Um, yeah. Jordan or Alex, whoever wants to take it, you plan to build a bridge between different networks within MetaMask. That's a big one. Um, sure. To that, yeah. So um, first of all, I know that there's a lot of the MetaMask team watching, uh, whether they're in the chat or watching together on Discord. Uh, shout out to the whole team. Um, so all of these questions that are upvoted, um, they are being viewed by our team. And uh, like we are prepared to answer them like here or, you know, separately. Uh, we're also seeing like what you all want to be built and that might help prioritize things for us. Um, so I don't know for sure if there is, uh, if there are plans to build a bridge within MetaMask. I think that's a wonderful idea though. And I can see that happening kind of like how we have um, the swaps aggregator within MetaMask and, you know, we're working on Fiat on-ramp stuff and, and perhaps someday there can be a bridge aggregator. Uh, that would be really, really cool. And that might actually be on the roadmap, but I'm fairly new to the team still, so I don't have a complete, uh, I don't have complete knowledge of the roadmap. Um, I do want to say though, that if it for some reason isn't on the roadmap, then I think this is something that something that could be built with the new MetaMask Snaps product. Um, so if you haven't heard of MetaMask Snaps, it is a groundbreaking new product that is part of MetaMask that will increase the extensibility of MetaMask a hundredfold. Uh, it basically allows people to build things on top of MetaMask. So you can build various different functions or support for other blockchains. Like maybe you wanna see MetaMask support Bitcoin. Like this is a thing that you can build with MetaMask Snaps and it's a very, it's a very new product and it's still kind of in the early phases. And um, I'd highly recommend uh, taking a look at this and learning about it. Um, it's currently accessible uh, with the like the dev slash like nightly build of MetaMask, which is called MetaMask Flask. And so if you want to learn more about it, uh, I'll make sure we get a link in the in the description or wherever else is appropriate. Um, but you can also go to metamask.io slash flask. And so the latter half of my answer here is applicable to any and all questions about like, will MetaMask build this? Because if we don't build it ourselves, it's very likely that's like another dev can build it with MetaMask snaps. Thank you. Yeah. And I know we are at the hour, but if you got, if anybody wants to stick around, we, we will get some, a few more questions here. And as Jordan mentioned, we do have uh, other people from the MetaMask team that are kind of in the wings, checking out your questions, looking at the chat. And already, if you scan down, because we're not gonna get to all the questions, unfortunately, but some have already answered some of those questions, which you can check it out. And the replay will have the questions and the answers as well. So uh, just so you know, uh, definitely scan down and see if your your question was already answered by one of our team members, but we'll, we'll go to another one here on the live call. So the next one, um, let's see, we have is, <clears throat> I guess the question was around, what is your team's plan around increasing wallet security? Is there anything specific right now on the radar um, around security? Sure, that's, that's a great question. And uh, like I mentioned earlier in the call, you know, I would say MetaMask is security first, pretty much. Uh, we're a lot of things, but but security is 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 paramount. 
Um, so, you know, anything security related is always applicable to ask and, and we appreciate those questions. Um, so there, there's a couple of things. One is relating to the amazing panel of hardware wallets that we had just now. Uh, so you as an individual can increase the security of your MetaMask by using a hardware wallet. And what's awesome is that all five, I think it was five hardware wallets, they're all, they all work with MetaMask. So like if you are in this space and you have any amount of cryptocurrency that would be painful to lose, get a hardware wallet. Like now, like, don't mess around, like just do it for yourself. Um, but there are additional things that we're doing to increase security. Uh, and, and one of those things, honestly, it's just increasing the education and awareness of, of the risks of, of holding cryptocurrency and the responsibility of it. Um, I know recently, uh, in, in a recent mobile release, we actually um, we increased the visibility of some of the, the messaging that we have of how to protect your secret recovery phrase and to never share it with anybody, like your eyes only. Um, but I do also know that on the actual product feature side, there, there are always things that we're thinking about adding. Um, I don't have specific answers for that right now, um, but but there's, there's a lot of different things and, and we're very, very, very security conscious. And I would encourage you to continue to ask questions surrounding security. Yeah, definitely. I can follow on from that. Of course, we just had a hardware wallet panel. Something we're doing inside MetaMask is of course, to bring them onto mobile as well, which I know a lot of people are, are using at this moment in time. But, you know, as part of the product team, I can say that I think security is that topic that comes up every single day in our conversations. And it's not just something like a big integration. This comes down to finessing our user experience and our design. So everything is as, un as understandable as possible. And people uh, know what they're doing as well is, is something we're really trying to focus on coming up. Awesome. And one last question before we go. We appreciate you guys uh, staying a little longer. Um, this is kind of a general question. Why not speak to it? Let's see. A lot of people want to know what's happening with the decentralizing of MetaMask. It says we have 30 million users. Is this possible? Can you imagine the power? We can. Uh, what, do, what do we have sure. um, in terms of internally our team? Uh, what are we thinking in terms of this? What's, what's the hopes and dreams that we're trying to infuse in this, this idea? Sure, sure. That's that's a fair question. And everyone is always curious. Uh, first of all, I have no update about if there is or isn't a token or if there ever will be a token, uh, just to get it out of the way. Uh, because, And I'm very, very clear about that because I know that uh, anything that anybody says uh, about that uh, can and will be used against us uh, in a court of law. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but so there's no update on that. Uh, I will say, uh, like MetaMask, like the entire team here, uh, and, and honestly, like even consensus as as an entire organization, we're all very decentralization forward. We we are we are here for the the core tenets of blockchain and what it enables, and um, so that's why we have a self custody wallet with MetaMask. Like that's <laughs> that's why we do the things that we do, and so uh, it is, you know the reason that we're all here uh, and, and building for cryptocurrency and working in cryptocurrency. And um, so it's it's always on our minds. Um, you know, I can't share anything specific because I just don't have any specifics, but I know that we all really care about it. And it's, um, it's something that we, you know, we constantly um, include as we're, as we're building. Yeah. And it is a top priority. And, and to Jordan's point, we're, the answer to that looks different. It could be many fold, right? Um, yeah, of course, everybody's thinking token, but we're also continually working with all of you who are building on the blockchain. And we want to, you know, create ways that we can, you know, partner and collaborate and activate together and create that community, which is this decentralized community where we're, we're all working towards, right? So, um, so yeah, that's that's the main goal is first, we want to make sure that we're inspiring you and we're hearing your feedback and addressing your pain points with the, with the you know, the tools we're providing you. And then the next level is, okay, great. Now look what we can do with that. And so thank you so much for your interest in it because it's, it's, it's kind of like the spirit of Web3, right? All right. One more question I want to kind of get because in the spirit of NFT LA, but what is the, uh, everybody's wondering, because NFT is becoming the thing that is kind of like mm -hmm. the foot in the door for everybody, right? So is there plans for, I think maybe uh, 
Dan's probably got this question a lot. Um, but like, are there plans for us to, uh, you know, MetaMask to be able to allow you to see your NFTs or like, how does that work? What is MetaMask plus NFT look like? That's a great question. Um, and honestly, I am a huge NFT head. I'm a, I'm a DJ and I've got like hundreds of NFTs that I shouldn't have. Um, so I will say right now on MetaMask Mobile, you can actually view your NFTs. Um, so if you don't have MetaMask Mobile, I would go to the the Apple, like the iOS store or the Google Play store and yeah. download it, Android set iOS. it up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you can you can view your NFTs there already. Uh, I do also know that uh, it's not only the community, but it's also the team that wants to add more support for NFTs in general to the extension. Um, and again, I don't know what the actual roadmap looks like for that. Uh, so I don't want to misrepresent anything. But uh, we, a lot of us are big fans of NFTs and we all know that there's a gigantic desire for more NFT support and we hear you for sure. And again, I'll be a broken record, but uh, MetaMask Snaps is also a way to yes. enable the things that you want to see uh, yourself. So highly recommend checking that out. Absolutely. And and we're going to be wrapping up here, but just to to kind of add to what Jordan said, as a developer, if you're building dApps, definitely check out Snaps. It is is going to be, we want to know how we can make it even more easy for you to kind of make that seamless UX experience, because that's going to be the key to onboarding new people into the Web3 experience. And um, in addition, of course, yeah, our goal is um, we want to be able to make it really easy for you to integrate with NFTs, to sell them, to purchase them, to be a part of that world. So that is definitely 100% a priority for MetaMask as well, because we want to be that that easy to use wallet that is highly secure. So that's our goal, right? Awesome. Well, I thank you so much for staying over a little bit. Everybody on the call, you guys are amazing. You make these calls special, of course. And thank you to all of our speakers that are in our front row. You don't see them now, but we really appreciate them joining. Of course, Alex, thank you so much. And Jordan. And um, we hope, yes. And uh, as, as I mentioned, this will be available as replay at the exact same link after we broadcast and we'll be sending you a follow-up thank you email with the replay links slide deck links um and uh and all that good stuff so don't you worry and then of course join us in the discord um we we can continue the conversation there with you all and we hope to and of course you'll get notified of our next next community call so we hope to see you on the next one and thank you for biddling with us all right thank you everyone thanks all thanks. ciao Goodbye.